Hello my friends, the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're gonna be in the laboratory. We're gonna be concocting up a bunch of different potions and putting different elements together to try to get potions to match for apothecaries. Today we're talking about Apotheca. This is for one to four players from Renegade Game Studios. Takes about a half hour to play. Today we're gonna do a rule school. This is basically going to allow you to set up and play the game without even reading the rules. So let me take you in here. I'm gonna give you a one minute overview of how the game's played and then teach you how to set up and play the game. Let's take a look. In Apotheca, you'll be trying to get potions of the same color to have three in a row, up, down, or left, right, to be scoring points. You'll be, on your turn, you'll be revealing and gaining gems of certain colors of potions. You'll be secretly taking tiles up, secretly looking at them, and placing them down where you like in the market. You'll be taking gems and spending the appropriate colors to grab different apothecaries that give you special abilities on the board, which will then allow you to, on a subsequent turn, move them in sort of abstracted ways similar to chess in order to get three in a row to score these points. But watch out, because once you score points, you can't use that power anymore, but you only need three points to win the game. There's also a master variant, which is one versus many, and there's a solo variant as well. To set up the base game, first you'll say who the sneakiest player is, that's the first player. And then you're going to take this stack of tiles that's placed next to the board, and you're going to place them in, take one tile for each corner, and place them face up. So we have a blue, a blue, a red, and a yellow. We are then going to take two more tiles. We're going to take one here and put it here face down. And we're going to take another one and put it face down. And in this case, you make sure that the arrow is pointing to whoever the second player is. In this case, the second player is sitting on that side. Each player is also given a player aid card, which tells them the actions they can do on their turn. Next, you're going to assemble and set up the Apothecary's deck. Now, this is what it looks like face down on the back. For your first game, you're going to pull out five of these specific Apothecaries. Merton, Benedetto, Emojin, The Porter King, and Corvidus. Now, you can pause this video right now to take a look at the names, what the cards look like, and I'll be here when you come back. Now, once you've done that, you also want to set up the sort of gem stalls here. The one with one of each of the three gems goes on the left, and the Apothecary's deck goes there. You also have blue, yellow, and red, and you put the gems on top of their colors. Now, it does not matter which order these colors are in. Now, once you've got these five separated out, you're going to take these five, you're going to shuffle them up, and you're going to pass one to each player that they place face up. The rest of the ones that aren't used are going to be placed on top of the Apothecary's deck. These players take those cards and they place them face up next to their player aid. Once those have been given out, you then deal one card to these empty stalls from the top of the Apothecary's deck. These are ones that can get bought later from these different colored gems. Now the third player, if there is a third player, will take this extra action token which they can use on their turn later in the game. Now the object of the game is to get three potions of the same color or more in a line. It has to be a straight line, up and down, or left and right, not diagonal. If you're playing with four players, you split up into two teams and you alternate turns. So team A, one person will sit here. Team B, another player from team A, another player from team B, so it alternates turns. And the first team together that gets three points wins and you can decide before the game whether talking is allowed or not. Now on your turn, normally you can do two different actions of these four. However, the first player of the game can only take one action. So let's say it's the first player and this player takes one of these actions. He can essentially, let's try reveal. You can flip over a face down potion in the market and gain a gem of its type. So let's say the person flips this one over. He sees a blue. He will take a blue gem from the supply and put it in front of him. It'd be the next player's turn, and now, from now on, everyone else is getting two actions, but you must take two different actions. You can't do the same thing twice. This player, you can restock. So if there's three or fewer face-down tiles, you can draw them, look at them, place them until there's three face-down. So I would draw this as there's only one face-down. I would draw this one. I would look at it secretly. I know that this one is a yellow. Let's say we're sitting on this side of the table. I can place this anywhere 
and I can place it with the arrow facing me, which means that any time during the game, anyone that this arrow is pointing to, that one player, can look at it again so that it's not a memory element. There's two face down, so in this uh, restock, I get to take one more because you do it until there's three. I'll look and there's a red, and maybe I place this one over here and face down. That would be a restock action. I'd get one more action. I could use a power from one of my apothecaries. This guy, these cards are pretty much, the rules are written on the card. So we're not gonna go over all these, but this one says, move a potion one or more spaces orthogonally, meaning up, down, left, or right. It may move, move through other potions. And as long as this is in front of you and not covered with anything, you can use it. But remember, you can only do each action once on a turn. So once per turn, I could use this guy, assuming he's not covered up. We'll get to that later. So he uses this action to move this one one space, and now we've got two in a row. That would be the end of that player's turn. And I'm going to go over the last action you haven't seen, which is hiring. I can either pay two gems of a certain color to get an apothecary, or I can spend one of each to get any apothecary or to get one off the top of the deck. Now remember, you get these gems by doing a reveal action. When you reveal a tile, you get that color gem. So let's say I had two red gems. I could essentially, from my pile, I would spend my two red gems, I would be able to place this apothecary in front of me, and then this would flip up and a new one would come out. Now again, if I had one of each of these colors, when I take this action to hire, I could turn in one of each of these gems and get any one of these guys, or I could take one blind off the top. So let's say it was my turn again, uh, or still, and I can use this guy. I hired him, and now I'm going to use its power. This guy allows me to choose a diagonal line, move its potions one space diagonally, and edges wrap around. So I could use this diagonal line, the edges wrap around, this would go here, and this edge wraps around here, and I do have a three in a row with blue. So I would take these three, it's essentially a point, and I would cover up the apothecary that was used to get this. This is a signifier of my point, but it also means that I cannot no longer use this apothecary for the rest of the game. So you're using him to use his ability to get the points, but then he's no longer useful. This continues until any player or any team, if you're playing with four, has a total of three points in the game ends and that team wins. Now there are some special shapes that can get you more than just a point. If you have any of them four in a line, or you have an L where there's three, and then three essentially like that. Or if there's a T, or if there's a cross. If you do any of these, in addition to taking all those potions, putting them on your apothecary and getting a point, you also get a gem that matches the color that you made of that shape. Earlier in setup, we said the third player gets an extra action. And then usually you, you take two different actions. If you're using an extra action, it has to be a third different action. You cannot take one of the two that you've already taken. Sometimes you might uh, use a card in Apothecary's Power to move things around and you'll be able to sometimes make two matches in a row. If you do that, you can basically claim these matches as a point in any order that you've made them one at a time. So I might take this one first, put them on an Apothecary, and I might take this one and put them on an Apothecary. Now this brings up a good point. Sometimes you may score a point and you don't have an Apothecary to put them on. So in this case, I had gotten two matches at a time. I take this, I score a point. If I do not have another apothecary to put a scoring, scored tiles on, they don't score for me. They actually go back out, out of the game, and I would get one gem of the color that I did there. So sometimes you can put them together and you don't score points. You need an apothecary to cover in order to get a point. And once again, the first person or team to get three points is the winner for the base game. Now I'm going to show you a variant of this game called the Master of the Market. To set this up, uh, you are going to take two blue, two red, and two yellow tiles. You're going to take them, flip them over, you're going to shuffle them all up, you're going to take these four, and then you're going to set up the market as normal. So we're going to flip one face up in every corner, and then we are going to place these facing the second player, just like the start game, except now we, ha no, we have two of each that are on the board. Now in this game, it's two to four players. One player will be the master. All the other players or player will be on their own as apprentices. Now the player who's on the apprentice team, they're on the same team, but they cannot share uh, face down potions that they've seen or share gems. Now the master, this will go in front of the master. It will get set up just like normal, except there's three new tiles here. One for each color, yellow, blue, and red. The master will decide the order of these tokens. Whichever token is on top is the color 
that this master can score right now. It also means that the other team, the apprentice or apprentices together, cannot score this color, whatever's on top. Master's trying to score this, the other people cannot. Also, the master will go first in the game and he will take a turn between each of the other apprentices. So if there's three total players, one player's the master, you have two apprentices, it goes master, apprentice, master, other apprentice, master, apprentice, master, other apprentice. Now, the master itself, one of, he has an additional action. If he wants to change which color he's going to, he can change this by spending one gem of that color. So essentially he could spend a gem, and then maybe he's going to change it so that blue is the one that he's going for, and it's the one that the other team cannot score right now. So in this case, he would have spent a blue gem and put blue on top. Now another big difference is the master never gets any of these apothecaries in front of them, but they can. the master can spend two gems of any of these colors to activate one of these. He doesn't take them for the whole round, for the whole game. He basically gets to use their action once by turning in one of those gems. Also, when other players spend, the apprentices, the other team spends like normal two yellow gems to get this card, instead of paying it to the stock, they pay it to the master. And since the master never gets any of these cards, when, they, when he gets a match of three on the board, he doesn't put them on any of these, he just keeps them in front of them for a certain point. So if the master scores three of blue, he has a point, but then he's going to have to spend an action and a gem of another color to change which one he's going for next. Now since certain teams can score or not score a certain color, for example, if the master's color was red and only the master can score this, if these tiles got like this on the apprentice team's turn, they don't get to score it. As soon as it becomes the master's turn, he will score this because it's red. And vice versa, if the master had yellow, meaning that was the color he was going to score, and this was put down on, on his turn by accident, uh, then the other team will score it right away. So you can only score tiles if it makes sense through the different color decree of the master. And finally, the master does not score a gem when using any of these or creating any of these special cases like you do in the base game. And basically, here it is. The master has to score one of each of the three colors before the apprentice team just scores any three. And that's how you play the master variant. Now I'm going to go over the setup for the solo variant. What you'll do is you will put four potions face up, one in each corner. You will then take face down tiles and place them in sort of two of these diagonal lines like this making sure that the arrows all for face away from you, meaning you cannot look at these tiles. You might wanna pause this here and get this set up like this. Now, also you're going to take two tiles next to every row and put them next to every row on the left side and do the same thing on the right side, two tiles in each row. The rest of the tiles you could put in the box away because you will not need them for this variant. You will then randomly give yourself an apothecary to start the game. You will also set up the apothecary market as normal. Now the differences between this and the base game are, well the first thing is there's no restock action. Since there's no pile of tiles that you can restock if there's less than three, you cannot use that restock action. You can, however, do the same action twice, where normally you could not in the base game, you can do the same action twice in this game. Now, when hiring apothecaries, instead of using two gems like normal, you have to use three gems. And to help me remember this, I typically put a gem of that color there. Also, you cannot no longer use the one gem of each to buy anything. So sometimes I actually take that out to remind me I cannot use that action in the solo game. Now, I mentioned you get to take two actions on your turn and they can be the same. If for some reason you can't take a second action, basically your turn ends. Otherwise, after you've taken your two actions in between every turn, you must take one of the tiles that are outside of the board and add them here. Well, how do they get added? We'll see here. This is column one, two, three, and four. We have column one, two, three, and four. So I, if I wanted to add a tile here, I would take this one because it's column two and I would place it like this. And, that, and I would have to be able to do that. Uh, I could not say add this tile here because there's already a tile there. So let's say I added this one and then I would take my next two actions. If at any time during this part after you've taken your two actions and you need to add a tile, if you cannot add them, meaning everything is full, the game then ends. Let's say on my turn I'm able to make a match. I've got three of the same. You do not remove them from the board like usual. You'll look at what's available and you will put these on any one of the spaces that you have. So for example, maybe this is the space I want to use. All of these 
would then go on to one of the spaces. Obviously, you're paying attention as to which ones you're leaving open as for which ones are going to be being placed back in. If you have an apothecary at this time that you've scored, you will basically put him face down to signify that he helped you score. If you did not have one, you would take one gem of the color that you just put together, but you wouldn't score any points. Now, if I did have an apothecary to help me score, I would score however many potions you see face up uh, on the board for that color. In this case, I only see one because this is considered one for scoring. I would score one point. But if the board looked like this when I scored this and I put them all together, I would score two points. And that's how the game works. The game ends when there's no place to place any of those outside potions onto the board. Uh, if it was empty, meaning you moved them all onto the board, then you gain five points bonus. Uh, so whether or not you did that, you would add that to the points that you already scored and you were keeping track of that I just mentioned, and you would get a certain level depending on how many points you scored. I'll leave this up here. You can pause it for reference. Well, I hope that helped you dive right into the game without having to read the rule book. And now if you have any questions about the rules itself, go ahead and leave them in the comments in this YouTube video and I'll do the best I can to answer them.